Hello guys, my name is Simon and today I'm going to show you the Electron Framework. What is Electron? The Electron Framework is an open source framework which is developed by the GitHub team. It allows developers to build cross-platform desktop applications with web technologies such as HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Popular apps that were built with the Electron Framework are the FM Code Editor or Visual Studio Code. How does it work? You build the application like you normally would build a website. To render the HTML files, the Chromium browser engine is used. Node.js acts in the background and provides APIs for file access and much more. This is all packaged into one application which you can ship to your customers. What were the problems without Electron? Developers usually had to learn different languages for building websites and desktop applications. For websites, HTML, CSS and JavaScript were used. For desktop applications, you usually had to use a different language, such as c or Java. It is also really hard to access native platform features. I will explain what I mean by that shortly. How does Electron solve these problems? Electron allows you to build desktop applications with web technologies. There is no longer a need to learn a different language because you can develop both websites and desktop apps with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It is also possible to access platform specific features. On the right hand side you see two screenshots. In the one at the front you see a Windows window. The menu bar is usually displayed on top of the window. On macOS, however, the menu is usually displayed in the status bar on top of the screen, which you can see in the second screenshot. Electron allows you to simply create a menu and displays it accordingly to the operating system. But there are more positive sides. Of course you can use all your web frameworks you like in Electron, so for example AngularJS, Bootstrap or TypeScript. It is also very easy to port websites to desktop applications because it works with the same technology now. What competitors are there? Normally, if you wanted to build a cross-platform application, you would choose JavaFX. But in JavaFX, it is very difficult to access the native platform features. You would also have to learn a separate language for the desktop applications. There is also Northwind.js, which is very similar to Electron. It allows you to build desktop applications with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. In my personal opinion though, Electron is more mature. For instance, Northwind.js has the version number 0.18, while Electron is on 1.4. Because of this, I choose the Electron framework. But enough talking, let's jump straight into the code sample, so you can understand how Electron really works. Ok, so before we get started, you have to make sure that you have Node.js installed on your machine or else Electron will not work. Then we are going to create a new folder and navigate to it with the command prompt. I have already done this. Then we type npm in it, which tells the uh, Node package manager to initialize this directory. We are just gonna hit enter and leave this all blank. And then we're going to edit this file. Just open it with notepad. We don't want to update now. And we can see we have the name of the application here. We also, ha we also have a version and a description. But this doesn't really matter for the functionality. And then we have the main. This file specified here is the main entrance file for the Electron program. You can compare it to a, a main method in a Java program. And we're going to name this main.js. Now this file does not currently exist, but we will create it later on. Then we have the script section. We are just going to, lead, to delete that. I'm going to say start. And what this is going to do is say Electron, which uh, tells the Electron framework that it is needed, and then point, which means the current directory. 
And here we can specify the author and the license, which are also currently not needed. We're going to save it and we head back to the command prompt. What we're now going to do is say npm install electron minus minus save minus dev. What this is going to do is download the electron dependency and save it to the dev dependencies in this package JSON file. I will come back to you after the download has finished and then we are going to continue. Okay, so the download and the installation has finished and what we now see when we go to the package JSON file is this new section. Here we see the dev dependencies, which is because we specified minus minus save minus dev uh, at the installation and we see the electron framework and this means download this version or higher. Now when you package the application and you save it and you ship it, the dev dependencies do not get packaged with it because the user does not need this dependency in his finished program. What we are now going to do is I'm going to show you a demo project which I made and then I'm going to walk you through the code and tell you how everything is made. Okay, so I have downloaded my demo project from my github repository. The link to this repository is in the video description. And if I try to start it, I will go to the command prompt and I would say npm start. Now this will not work because as you can see, the computer does not know the electron command because every time you import the project, you have a look at the JSON file and you see you have the dev dependencies and you have dependencies, which I will come to later. And before you can start it, you have to download and install these dependencies. So you're going to say npm install and it is going to download every, every dependency and install it. I will come to you back after the installation has finished. Okay, so we see the installation has finished and now we're going to try starting it again. As you see, now it works and it opens our application. What I have done is just add a simple person form. So we can say John Doe and add it. Then we see it, it appears in the list. We can also say Max Masterman and add it. And we can also delete them from the list. And now I'm going to, to show you how this application was built and how it works. Okay, so I have opened the project and I have opened the main.js file, which we are going to have a look at. Now I'm only going to talk about the electron specific features, not about JavaScript syntax or anything like that. I just assume you know basic JavaScript. So here we create a variable for the main window, which is really important because it keeps the garbage collector from destroying our application. So you should not forget this. Then we have a function create window. What this does is uh, assign the, the main window. We're going to say it's a new browser window with the dimensions. Then we're going to say main window dot load URL and load the index.html file, which we see here. Then we set up the menu. I'll come back to that in a few seconds. We give it the menu template and then we set the menu. And then we say when the window is closed, we set the reference to null. And down here we have function which says open the about window. So if we jump back to the application, we see up here we have a menu, application, about, and then there is this little about window which pops up. And what we do here is also create a new variable 
and say it's a new browser window, specify its dimensions and what we also do here is we say it has a parent which is the main window and we say modal is true. So if we jump back you, say, you see you can't move the parent window because this is opened like a dialog. Then we're going to say we load the URL, in this, in this case the about.html file. Then we set the menu to now because in this, in this about window we don't need a menu. And then we say once it's ready to show, we're going to show it. Now let's jump up to the menu. If you see, there we have a, a menu item which says application. If we click on it, a submenu pops up and the menu item says about. If we click on it, the about window opens. Now we have this menu template. Up here we have a label which says application and a submenu. And in this submenu we have a label which says about and on click it opens the about window. This menu template is structured like a normal JavaScript or JSON object would be structured. And in the menu we just say menu.buildfromTemplate and give it the template and then we can set the menu to a window. Now we have a look at these three functions. This is pretty self-explanatory. We say once the app, so the app is the whole application and not any window, it's the whole application. We say app on ready, so if the app is ready, we're going to create the window, the first window, the main window. And these two functions are for Mac OS. So we're going on Mac OS, usually apps don't get closed completely. They stay open in the menu bar down at the bottom with a little black dot. So what we're going to do is say app on window all closed. So if all windows of the application are closed and if the process is not Darwin, so if the operating system is not macOS, so for example Linux or Windows, we're going to quit the app completely. And if we are on macOS, however, it will stay open. And this means app on activate. So if we click on the on the icon down in macOS, it's activated, then this will trigger and it says if the main window is now, we're going to create a new window. This is pretty much all it takes to fire this up. Now we have a look at the HTML files. First the about HTML we just have a simple about, uh, a simple HTML page. It is structured like a normal HTML page in the web would be structured. And we also have a look at the index HTML, which is also the same. But this time we have a special script section down here. If we jump back in our application, we can see if I hit F12, the uh, web console and the web developer tools pop up and if I hit F5 we can reload the whole application. This is a very neat feature for developing but you should remove it when you package it and ship the application. Now to get this to work we need this little script section. What we do here we say we require the remote which is used to access electron specific features and we go in to add an event listener on the key down event to the whole document. We're going to say if the user presses F12 which is key code 123 we open the dev tools and if the user presses F5 which is key code 116 we're going to reload the window and what this does is allow the reload capabilities which I just showed you. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is the database. So this, if we add a new person, John Doe for example, this is persisted in a database. In this example I'm using the 
an EDB database. It is very similar to MongoDB, but it is reliant purely and built with purely with JavaScript. So it integrates very well into Electron. It's very lightweight and very performance oriented. And it is required by, not required, but recommended by the Electron developers. We're going to jump into the database.js file to see how the database works. So on top, we load a new data store. So we say we require the, an EDP module and save it to the data store and create a new DB in the file name persons.db, which we can see here. And we say auto load is true. So it should automatically be loaded on application startup. And then we say we have an add person function, which takes first name and the last name. It creates a new Java ob uh, JavaScript object and it inserts it into the database. And we also have a function which uh, queries all persons and executes a callback function with these persons. And we also have a function which deletes these persons. If you want to learn more about an EDB and how it works, I have a link to their GitHub repository in the video description. Okay, so now I have shown you how this application was built. And now I'm going to show you how you can package and ship the application. There, for this, we're going to install the Electron Packager, so we're going to say npm install electron minus packager space minus g, which installs it globally, so we can access it from the command line. I have already installed it, so I'm not going to do it. And then we're going to say electron minus packager point, so the current directory. Then, then we say minus minus platform, which on Windows it's Win32, and the archetype, minus minus arc, in my, in my case it's x64, because I have a 64-bit system. If you have a 32-bit system, you're going to say x32. Uh, and I'm going to run it, and it is now going to package my application. If you want to package the applications for all platforms, you're going to say electron minus packager point minus minus all. Now what this is doing, it is downloading every particular files it needs for every uh, platform and every archetype. And so this can take a while. And as I say, it, it just finished. If we jump in our into our folder, we see it created a new folder, electron demo, minus win32, minus x47, uh, 47, I mean 64. And if we jump in it, we see a lot of files which are needed by the electron framework. So you have to include every file in here. And we also have an electron minus demo.exe. We're going to double click it. And we see we have our, our working application, which works as it should. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you what is achievable with Electron and that it's not very difficult to build applications with Electron. If you want a step-by-step -step guide how to create such applications, I have linked you a great video tutorial series which I have also used to learn Electron. And I'm also going to link you to the official documentation because it's also very good. And I hope I could teach you something about the Electron framework because in my opinion, it is a very nice technology and it makes things very simple. So thank you for your attention and see you soon.